In traffic planning, weather forecasting or molecular biology, today's high-performance computers are not sufficient to precisely calculate systems with a large number of particles. This limits the accuracy of simulations. Innsbruck quantum physicists are now ensuring that previously unsolvable tasks can be solved. They have developed a quantum coprocessor that takes over the complex part of the calculation. It is based on a quantum simulator. It's computationally extremely expensive to describe a full quantum system with many, many particles on a classical computer because the, all the, the parameters needed or the effort needed to describe a system with many particles scales exponentially with the number of particles. Any material consists of many atoms, and not just many, but like thousands or millions or even millions of millions of atoms. So if I have an exponential number of states for these millions of millions of atoms, there is no way I can store uh, the state of these atoms in the computer. So I just cannot do the simulation on a normal computer. Uh, on the other hand, if I have a quantum system, like we have here in the lab, this also has the same number of states available to itself. So the, you use a quantum system which naturally can store so many states to describe another system uh, where you need so many states to store it. An example. A light bulb can have two states, on and off. Two light bulbs can already have four states, two off, two on and one on each. 20 lamps yet have more than a million possible combinations. For example, to, to store the information, to store the, the whole information of a system with uh, only 70 qubits, it requires about a setabyte of, of memory. And this is more than entire humanity has available at the moment. The Innsbruck quantum physicists of the Austrian Academy of Sciences combine classical computers with quantum technology. They use a programmable ion trap quantum computer with 20 qubits as coprocessor. It basically combines the advantages of, of the two other um, ways to quantum simulate systems. So an analog quantum simulator has the advantage that it can simulate large systems, so quantum systems with lots of particles in it. The digital the quantum simulator instead uh, has the advantage that it's yeah, somewhat universal, so at least in theory you could simulate any quantum system. So the reason of doing this is that we want to um, basically mimic a system that we want to study. So we want to maybe study a material and want to find out how good is this at uh, conducting electricity. Uh, these are uh, things which are very hard to calculate on a, on a normal computer. But this quantum computer could, in principle, calculate this for you. Unlike normal bits, quantum bits can have more than two states. Besides zero and one, almost everything goes in between. And that makes them very interesting for calculations. The quantum system prepares a, a complex quantum state. This could be, for example, by um, entangling our ions or rotating individual ions in, in certain directions. And this complex quantum state is then read out and the, the gained data is sent to the classical computer. The classical computer then interprets the data and tells the quantum computer which quantum state to prepare next. Whether the results of the quantum simulator make sense can be checked with the help of classical computers. The calculation of more than 20 qubits is hardly possible with today's computing power. It is therefore important that the quantum system can check itself. And it is this self-verification that the Innsbruck researchers have succeeded in doing for the first time. So the, the problem with the quantum system is, is also they're, they're very fragile, so like very, you have to isolate them very well from the environment, so any little disturbance uh, can destroy your, your computation that you are doing. So it's a very sensitive device. And if there is no other way of checking uh, if the answers are correct, uh, like you cannot do it on your normal computer, then, well, usually people would say, well, I just bin build another experiment and I do the same experiment and then I check if they agree. But what if they don't agree? Then you don't know which one to choose. Well, you can build a third and a fourth, etc. But the advantage of our method is that we can independently of any theory, we can, on the quantum system itself, 
we can already get answers of how good uh, are the solutions it produces. So it will give you a quality estimate of the results. This success is also based on the intensive cooperation of experiment and theory at the Innsbruck Quantum Research Center. And the scientists already have another goal. They are working on a quantum computer with 50 qubits.